So now that we've talked about the difference between discrete and continuous data and the different types of data, we're going to have a look at interpolation again. Remember that this is used to find the median or uh, lower quartile or upper quartile, uh, but this time using discrete data. So we have already discussed how to use interpolation uh, to find key points with continuous data. The same can be done with discrete data. This does require an extra step, however, to make sure that the data is changed to be a continuous set of data before we start. This is done by making the ends of the boundaries equal to the, uh, the same as the starting point of the next interval. So here we have the weight lost by 270 Weight Watchers participants over a year are recorded. We're going to use the data to estimate a couple of different values. We mainly looked at the uh, median when we had a look at doing this with continuous data. However, the same steps can be applied to have a look at the low quartile and upper quartile, which we're going to have a look at here. So as we can see, we've got discrete data. The ends of the intervals are not the same as the beginning of the next intervals, and that's what we need to change. So for this first interval, and I want to do this just to the left hand side, instead of going from 60 to 99, it needs to go to 99.5. Now the reason why we go up to 99.5 is because that's halfway between 99 and 100, and we're wanting to make sure that these are meeting up. Again, the top end of this one here is going to go to 119.5 because that is halfway between 119 and 120. So this one here is also going to be 119.5. Same again for the 139 and the 140. They're both going to become 139.5 and the 159 and the 160 are both going to become 159.5. Now, for the beginning and the end values, we always have to be careful to make sure it still makes sense. So the bottom value that we have here is 60 and the top value that we have here is 220. Now, we want to try and change these by the same amount as we have the other ones. And in this case, it does make sense. If, however, the bottom value here was zero, we can't... In this case, we could lose a negative amount of weight, so that would be fine. But depending on what these values are, sometimes having a negative value doesn't make sense. So you do have to just take a little bit longer to think about, does it make sense to have a negative value? In this case, we don't end up with negative values, so that's fine. And just as we had before, when we were having a look at this with continuous data, we need to add on a cumulative frequency. And we need to add up the values as we go down. So 20, 20 add 60 is 80, 80 add 80 is 160, 80 add 50 is 210, 210 add 260 is 270, which is what we were expecting because it said that we had 270 here. Now to find the median, remember that we're using n plus 1 divided by 2, so that's 270 plus 1 divided by 2. So in our normal calculator part, we'll have 270 plus 1 divided by 2, which gives us 135.5. And remember, that tells us what piece of data we're looking for. So looking back at the data that we have, 80 is too small, 160 is too big, so somewhere in our third group here is going to be our median. Now we draw our number line the same as we did with the continuous data. So we know that the interval starts not at 120, but 119.5. And it ends not at 139, but at 139.5. And we're looking for some value in there. The number of pieces of data we have at the beginning is 80, the number we have at the end is 160, and we're looking for piece of data number 135.5. We set up our equations in the same way, so we're going to have x minus, uh, so minus 119.5 
divided by, and we're going to use the same values but the ones that are on the bottom this time, 135.5 minus 8 ten. equals 139.5 minus 119.5 divided by on the bottom 160 minus 8 And remember that we put this into equation, solver, delete anything that you already have in there. Then we do fraction, remember to use your x v to t button for the x, minus 119.5 over 135.5. Minus 8t across to get out of your division sign. Shift and then the decimal point for your equals. Another fraction, 139.5 minus 119.5 divided by 160 minus 8t. And then remember that you have to click XE twice to get your answer. So here we have that the median. Oops, the median is going to be 133.375 or 133 to 3 significant figures. Now for the lower quartile, we would still have n plus 1 on the top, but this time we would divide by 4. So that means that we have 270 plus 1 divided by 4. So 270 plus 1 divided by 4. And that gives us 67.75. Do not round that to three significant figures. Keep that as the whole number. So again, looking at our values here, 20 is too small, 8 is too big. So that means that this time we're looking in the second group and somewhere in there will be our lower quartile. So again, drawing your number line. It starts at 99.5. It ends at 119.5 and somewhere in there is our lower quartile. The number of pieces of data that we have at the beginning of that is 20. The number of pieces of data we have at the end is 8. And we're looking for the lower quartile, which is at 67.75. So again, making our fractions, we're going to have x minus 99.5. divided by 67.75 minus 20, same values that are on the bottom in the same positions, equals 119.5 minus 99.5, divided by 8 minus 20. So again, back to solver. You can just start typing over what you've already got in there. So you can just click your fraction button and it'll clear anything that's already in there. Remember to use your XV to T button, minus 99.5 over 67.75 minus 20, shifting the decimal 
Sift another decimal point for your equals. 119.5 minus 99.5 divided by 8 minus 20. Exit twice gives us a lower quartile of 115.416 recurring, which to three significant figures gives us 115. A good quick double check, it's not really checking your answer, but is your lower quartile less than your median? Yes, it is. That's a good sign. Now, for the upper quartile, remember that the upper quartile is going to be 3 times the lower quartile, because the lower quartile is 1 quarter, the upper quartile is going to be 3 quarters. And again, 270 plus 1 divided by 4, but this time the answer times by 3. So if I go back to my calculator, I've already got that answer there, times 3 gives me 203.25. And remember to keep that whole number for now. Drawing our number line, having a look where it lies, 203.25, that's going to be in that third category, 160 is too small, 210 is too big, so it's going to be somewhere in that third group. So that starts at 139.5. That ends at 159.5, and somewhere in the middle of there is our upper quartile. We have 160 pieces of data to start off with, we end up with 210. And we're looking for piece of data number 203.25. So again, <clears throat> x minus 139.5 divided by 203.25 minus 160. equals 195.5 minus 139.5 divided by 210 minus 160. So again, back into solver. X, using the X V to T button, minus 139.5 divided by 203.25 oops, minus 160 equals 159.5 minus 139.5 divided by 210 minus 160. Xy twice. And that gives us an upper quartile of 156.8 or to three significant figures, 157. So I'd like you to pause the video and give the now you try a go. Again, looking for the median, the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So hopefully you paused the video and gave the now you try a go. As you can see, the first step again is to change the bounds because we can see here 55 is not the same as 56. So we have to go halfway and then remember to do the same with the beginning and the end of the values uh, as long as it still makes sense to do so. Also, adding on a cumulative frequency to the right-hand side of the table. Then, using n plus 1 divided by 2, we see that the median is at a piece of data number 11. So, that's going to be within this group here, because that one ends at 9 and that one ends at 17. So, it's somewhere in between 60.5 and 65.5. Setting up our straight lines, again, 
we end up with x minus 60.5 divided by 11 minus 9 equals 65.5 minus 60.5 divided by 17 minus 9. And that in the solver part of our calculator ends up giving us 61.83 significant figures. For the low quartile, doing 21 plus 1 divided by 4 gives us 5.5. This time, it's within the second group because that one starts at 2 and ends at 9. So we've got 55.5 to 60.5. And again, we'd have x minus 50.5. Six, uh, divided by all right divided by 5.5 minus 2 equals 60.5 minus 55.5 divided by 9 minus 2 sorry I forgot to highlight those as I went then and that ends up giving us a lower quartile of exactly 58 and then three times that to get the value for the upper quartile, so it's piece of data number 16.5. If we have a look here, 16.5 is also in the same group as what our median was. So that's why I haven't highlighted it again on here, because then it's hard to see. So we're looking again between 60.5 and 65.5, which still goes between 9 and 17. But this time we're looking at piece of data number 16.5. So we'd have x minus 60.5 divided by 16.5 minus 9 equals 65.5 minus 60.5 divided by 17 minus 9 which ends up giving us 65.2 to 3 significant figures. Now we've had a look at this now to do with the median, the lower quartile and the upper quartile. They could also ask you to do it with percentiles in an exam, I suppose, if they ask you to do interpolation to find those. So if we were looking at the 10th percentile of this data, for instance, we have 21 pieces of data, 21 plus 1, if we're looking for the 10th percentile, so 10%. We'd be looking at times it by 0 0.1, which would give us 2.2. So that means that we'd be looking just inside that first group. Starts at 55.5, ends at 60.5. Lower is 2, the upper bit's 9, and we're looking for piece of data number 2.2. The way that you can always double check that you, you have chosen the correct interval to look into is that when you put your piece of data that you are looking for between the values, it should still work like a number line. 2 is smaller than 2.2, which is smaller than 9. If the value that you put here in the middle is larger, then you have chosen the wrong interval and you need to go back and have another look at your data or you have put the values on your number line in the wrong place. So always make sure that you double check that you have definitely set up your number line correctly before doing your calculations. Thank you very much for listening.